Hello, this is Lady Deborah uh, from Valdosta, Georgia, coming live to you from uh, Valdosta, Georgia. And I'm going to discuss Hebrews 12 and not just read it, read the chapter to you, but we're going to discuss it along with you, too. Um, so uh, let's get started in Hebrews 12. Verse 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a pile of witness, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which just so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Well, wherefore, this is a very crucial transition word offering an emphatic conclusion. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 8, to the section which begin in Chapter 10, verse 19. Witnesses is the deceased people of chapter 11. Give witnesses to the value and blessing of living by faith. Motivation for running the race is not in the possibility of receiving praise from observing heavenly saints. Rather, the runner is inspired by the godly examples those saints set during their lives. The great crowd is not compromised with spectators but rather is compromised to one whose past lives of faith encourages others to live that way. Let us, the reference to this, to those Hebrews who had made a profession of Christ, but had not gone all the way to full, to full faith. They had not yet begun the race, which starts with salvation. The writer has invited them to accept salvation in Christ and join the race. Every way, di different from the sin mentioned next, this refers to the main incoherence in weighing down the Hebrews, which was the Le Levitical system with its stippling legalism. The athlete would strip away every piece of unnecessary clothing before competing in the race. The outward things emphasized by the Levitical system not only impede, they entangle sin. And this context focused first on the particular sin of unbelief. Patience is, is, or endurance, which is a steady determination to keep going. Okay, um, we're going to move on to, uh, there's a lot of reference goes with that. We're going to read on verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Just as in verse 1 establishes some qualities for the entrance into the actual running of life's race. He was creator of God. John 1, verse 1 through 3 says, In the beginning was the word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. He loved us enough to suffer on the cross for us, because we were His creation. He bought us back with His precious blood. We belong to Him. If we have accepted Him as our Savior and Lord, we are not our own. We are his. The contract says paid in full. He is seated at the right hand of the Father because his work is finished. It was finished on the cross, and at his resurrection he defeated sin when he took sin on his body on the cross. Sin died for the believer on the cross when Jesus said it is finished. Death was defeated when Jesus rose from the grave. It is finished. Verse 3, For consider him that endures such contradictions of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. Consider him. Uh, Jesus is a supreme example of willingness to suffer in obedience to God. He faced Hostility, the same word as oppose, 
and endured even the cruel cross. Okay, at one point, the non-believers even said that Jesus was of the devil. What a terrible accusation to make the Son of God. Even those who were astonished at the miracles Jesus did thought he was someone else. Even today, people speak of Jesus as a man. The real problem then and now is in realizing who this Jesus Christ really is. Jesus Christ was Emmanuel, God with us. Verse 4, ye have not yet resisted unto blood striving against sin. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such it as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. A Christian should never say, I can't do it. God will help you. And you can do what he has called you to do. The desire of my life is to be able to stay with Paul at my departing. 2 Timothy 4, 7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Verse 6. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of me, him, for whom the Lord loveth he chasteneth, and scourge every son whom he receiveth. So we see that, uh, the way we grow in the Lord is to face problems and overcome them with the help of the Lord. Romans 5 Verse 3 5, and not only so, but we glory in the tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because of the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Proverbs 3, verse 11 through 12, my son despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be wary of his correction, for whom the Lord loveth he correct even as the Father, the Son, in whom he delighted. I am thoroughly convinced that the reason children feel so unloved by their parents today is because they do not punish them for wrongdoing. Children need a standard set when they break the rules. They should be punished. If they are not properly punished for their misdeeds, they are never able to release the guilt they bear for that misdeed. If you love your child, show him you do by punishing him for wrongdoing. Guilt is a terrible thing to carry around. If you sin, pray and ask for forgiveness. God will forgive. Let us see what Jesus said about this in Revelation 3, verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous, therefore, and repent. The best thing to do is to not sin in the first place, then there will be no punishment. James 1, 12. Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Uh, that's the first part of Hebrews. We'll move on to the next part in our next lesson and uh, say, God bless you all for this evening. This is um, 4.09 p.m. Eastern Time on the first day of April and God bless every one of you and uh, the next time I love each and every one of you goodbye